audio. I got a few tweets regarding speaker cable. Bo Kelly tweeted, what gauge speaker wire is best for home theater systems, and is there any difference between Radio Shack wire and Best Buys? Um, Look, short answer, 12 or 16 uh, AWE, the American wire gauge, is good for most runs. Uh, if you have a big, fat, honking amplifier or really, 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 really long runs, I'd go with 12 gauge. I just use 12 gauge for everything when I can. Do yourself a favor. Try to run the same length of speaker wire to all three front speakers. Keeps the resistance across the line, connecting them the same. And don't run any cable inside your walls or ceiling unless it's actually UL rated CL2 or CL3 because you don't want to burn your house down. Unlikely, but... Do me a favor, use the CL2 or CL3 rated, check your local uh, zoning codes on that. Now, using connectors, always a better idea than bare wire ends. Pin connectors are better, better uh, banana connectors, which is a word I can't say. And if you're really, really kind of freaking out right now, binding posts, the ones that screw down, hold better than spring clips. Those are the ones you press and insert the, the clip into, the wire into. Uh, if you don't jerk your speakers around and have toddlers that yank on wires, it's probably not an issue. In fact, spring clips releasing your wires can be a good thing if you have a toddler so that don't pull your 400 pound speaker. Do you prefer the tips on the ends of your wires compared to like just tinning them with like silver or something? At know? the very least, I would tin them with solder. But in some ways, I kind of like the the little the finished ends. There's a convenience factor. Partially, if you're, if you're putting it together once, like if, if you're putting the stereo together once and you're going to move your speakers and once they're set, you're never going to swap stuff around. Yeah, solder the ends of your wires, insert them, you're done. With the stuff we do in here, I really like the tips. Um, really big inside tip. Uh, Go to Home Depot or Lowe's or, or go on the Internet's Amazon uh, Monoprice since they seem to have solved their credit card issues and uh, just buy a big, cheap spool of copper wire and, and save yourself money. Unless you want like flat wire that fits under your carpet or you're an audiophile and you insist on having 0.99999% copper that is oxygen pure and hand drawn by innocent people from small counties and upper... You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah, I mean, you may be able to hear a difference between 12 gauge copper wire that came from, you know, um, I don't think you're going to hear a difference at all. I yeah. think you could use a coat hanger and it's going to sound the same personally. And that actually, would, that actually has been proven in blind testing where they I inserted that, a coat hanger. If you have a multimeter, though, I'd right. say do a resistance test on the wires that you're going to use in case if there's a major difference between two, right. then you know there's probably a problem with the wire, especially if they're the same length. It's Which could a be a check. crack in the casing that led to oxidation it that damaged be. the copper. Unlikely, but there might be a damage portion yeah. of that cable in but, there. I buy these, you know, 12 gauge spools that cost as little money as possible per foot, and that allows me to continue enjoying my hobby rather than trying to figure out how to pay off my last upgrade to my system. <laughs>